beautiful swaths of forest are commonplace in the Adirondacks, but just outside the town of Newcomb, there's a stand of white pine that is unique even in a land of resplendence. Rene Germain is a professor in the Department of Forests and Natural Resource Management at SUNY ESF. He believes that this stand, which is nearly 100 years old, can teach us how to use and renew our natural resources while retaining the unique character of our wild places. And this white pine that we're in right now was planted in, in 1916. And uh, as you can see around you, the, the pine are giant trees, very much like what you would see in, in the Pacific Northwest in terms of Douglas fir. Uh, that's how much volume per acre there is. White pine is a species that had a multitude of uses in colonial times and a high economic value. White pine is considered the tree that built America. The colonists used the white pine for all their construction needs. Houses, fences, plank roads, flooring, everything was, was white pine because they literally came to a forest that looked like this. The trees were uh, straight, uh, the boards were clean, uh, structurally it was sound, it was light, easy to work with. And uh, so everything was made out of white pine. Uh, and even the, the British uh, liked the white pine uh, and they used the, the, the big white pine for their mass for their Navy ships. The white pine trees growing in the Huntington Forest are healthier and more robust than many other stands in the region because of the particular site where they grow. This is a high, what we call a high site index. And uh, it's for hardwoods. And so the pine are here because they were planted and tended. Uh, but normally you wouldn't get pine on this site. And so that's why these pine are, are so tall and so big, uh, because of we're at the toe of the mountain and there's some fertile soil here. When you see white pine throughout New York State, and it, it only makes up 10% of our forest cover. Uh, that might be surprising to people that live in the Hudson Valley where you see a lot of white pine. But if you're in the southern tier of New York, you hardly see any white pine. So it's mainly concentrated up here in the North Country. Uh, and it grows on sandy soils, uh, and it, it, look, it, it does fine there. That's where it competes well. These towering giants are durable and resilient, but they are not impervious to all harm. The greatest threat to these titans of the forest is a rather small creature that goes by the name white pine weevil. Well, the white pine weevil was brought into this country in the early 1900s uh, from Germany, and it's a, a little insect that'll eat the terminal shoot, and that's when you see these field pine that are all branchy and, and disformed, that's because of the white pine weevil. This stand of white pines remains free of pest infestations, and trees harvested here in October provided an incredible amount of high-quality lumber. They're not old-growth trees. They're less than 100 years old. They look like old-growth because they're so big, but they're not, and it's time to regenerate this stand. We harvested a, around 20,000 board feet per acre in this stand. Uh, and uh, about a total of 150,000 board feet just from, uh, you know, this eight or ten acres. Graduate student Sarah Ficken is tasked with calculating how much more lumber was harvested from the trees in Huntington Forest when compared with that of a more typical stand of white pine. Huntington was a high quality site, Pack was a site more typical of white pine, and so by comparing the two sites, we'll sort of be able to see if it pays to grow white pine on high quality sites or if growing them on typical sites that white pine grows on is, is better. The recent harvest in Huntington Forest is just the beginning of the learning process. Renee hopes that this project leads to a better understanding of how communities can maintain the ecological integrity of an area while still reaping economic benefits. We use a lot of wood products in our society, so it, it's extremely uh, uh, rewarding to be able to to promote wood products. They sequester carbon. It's a renewable resource. So I think uh, most of the research team's excited when we can uh, keep a working economy in the North Country uh, by managing white pine or managing northern hardwoods, uh, promoting wildlife habitat, and uh, providing jobs for people. You can manage these working landscapes and still protect your water quality your soils, your wildlife, and your aesthetics. I mean, a lot of people are gonna come in here in 10 years, and they're not gonna know that there was a harvest here. They're gonna walk through here on a trail, and they're gonna see some nice trees, and they're gonna go, this is really pretty.